Good morning and happy Mother's Day from Ridgewood. Oh my goodness, what a great day to worship with my family. I, uh, I'm going to do my best just to see who all is on here real quick. Let me see here. I'm, uh, I'm going to miss a whole lot of you folks, so just uh, just understand that. I see, uh, oh, there is uh, uh, Becky Lawson. Good morning, Miss Becky, and happy Mother's Day to you. There is Miss D. Hi, sweet lady. Happy Mother's Day to you. There is uh, Lisa Lee. Good morning to Lisa. There's Judy Stotts. Mm, there's Miss Dini. Hi, good morning, Miss Dini. Miss Beverly McGraw is here. Uh, there is Howard Miller. So that means Miss Barb is here. So, so glad that you are here. I'm, I'm going on down again. I'm going to do my best to see. Uh, there is Miss Jessie. Miss Jessie uh, up to Grove is here. Miss Sandy, I see you. Gail Harris, I see you, lady. There's Pam Jones, I see you. Uh, oh, my goodness. There's just, there's a lot of folks here that uh, I know, again, I know I'm going to miss. And I am sorry if I have not called out your name. Just know that you are loved. Oh, my goodness. You are loved by your pastor. You are loved by this church. And uh, I am thrilled that you have chosen to hang out with uh, Ridgewood this morning online as we celebrate moms. Uh, you know, this past week, I've, uh, I've had some fun. I've, I've put some questions out online just to kind of uh, get you thinking about mom quotes and what it was like for mom life and so on and so forth. And, and, and I have just loved everything about it and thank you uh, each to to those of you who have shared and and you you again can get on there at any time and you can share uh, with those posts but today we're going to worship a risen savior that's exactly why that we're here and uh, uh, we're going to sing some songs that uh, I, I I chose uh, I just felt led to go this way because I, I have a feeling that uh, uh, some of these songs are going to be favorites of yours, especially to our moms. Uh, I know one or two have been very special to the ladies in my life uh, growing up as a little boy. And so I just wanted to, uh, to, to do that today so that uh, uh, it would be your favorites. Uh, we're going to sing uh, some of our old favorite hymns. And so I want you to sing today where, where you are at home. Uh, if you happen to be traveling, uh, let's, let's just sing, okay? I want you to worship your Lord and Savior and sing with me unlike anything that you've ever sang before. Thank you again. If you are a guest, if you are, are tuning in online, if you're just passing by, let me just say thank you for uh, uh, joining me here at Ridgewood. Uh, we're going to have a great time. We have got a very powerful message today that uh, I'm going to entitle Mom Life 2020. Uh, and I do hope that uh, you will hang around, that you will dive in to this, uh, this very powerful story with me that we find in scripture. But right now I'm going to open us with prayer. And as you uh, continue to hop on, you've still got time to, to invite some of your friends, invite your family. Feel free to like the broadcast. You can hit that heart. You can love it at any time during the service. And I, I truly want to encourage you to share uh, our broadcast on your page. That way that's just more folks that will be able to hear the gospel this day on this beautiful Mother's Day that we're going to celebrate here in the Arkansas Delta. Will you pray with me this morning? Father, we just come to you today. We thank you for the opportunity to gather. Father, we are all across the, the county and all across the country. But Father, to know that we are the church, that we are one. And Father, we worship you as one this day. Father, I ask you that you will just... Put a special blessing on each one that is watching this broadcast right now and each one that will watch this service in the future. Father, may you reach out, may you touch them wherever they may be at whatever point in their life that they find themselves. Father, today as we worship you in song, Father, may you be glorified, may you be honored. And Father, we're just going to be careful to ask all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, let's sing. Get this over here real quick, okay? All right. Here's an old favorite that I love, and I know you're going to enjoy it. Probably going to want to just tap your toes on this one as well.
what a great song to get us started and moving this morning. Let's continue with one song that uh, my grandmother, my granny Whaley, uh, really enjoyed this song. And so uh, if you would sing this with me, I know you're going to know it and I know you're going to enjoy it. favorites go ahead and say amen right there hit that heart button so we'll know that you are enjoying these hymns precious hymns of the faith
morning uh, our last song that we want to sing this morning uh, I can assure you that uh, everyone that's watching or that will watch is, is going to know this song uh, because uh, it is it, it's a favorite it's, it's a staple of, uh, of most believers um, it's an extra special song for me uh, because it was my grandmother on my mom's side uh, I called her emo and I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in a little bit but uh, it was my emo's favorite song and uh, and I remember as a little boy uh, I played saxophone in the high school band and for many years uh, I went over to her house when I was uh, out of school I'd go over there and of course you know I'd wag my books and, and I'd wag my saxophone and uh, every day every day out on her front porch uh, I would practice and every day uh, this was one of those songs she said uh, you know Jim I need you I need you to play this for, for your emo. Uh, will you play that for me? Will you learn it and will you play it? And when I did, it didn't take long, but when I did, I had to play it every day for her. And so uh, uh, it's just very special. And I know you're going to know it, so I want you to sit back where you are, and I want you to lift your voices, and I want you to lift your hearts and sing Amazing Grace with me.
enjoyed those songs go ahead and uh, you might want to hit that heart button or that like button and let's uh, let's tell some folks exactly how you feel this morning i know that each of you have uh, have taken the time to go ahead and wish moms happy happy mother's day as uh, as much as you can and uh, i i so appreciate that it has been uh, a good day uh thus far here uh hanging out with Miss Denise. She is, uh, she's pretty, pretty special. Just let me, let me just go ahead and say that uh, real quick. All right, we're going to get settled uh, real quick. Again, thank you to everyone that is watching. Thank you for uh, uh, those of you who are um, our Ridgewood family. Thank you for those of us who are uh, now part of our uh, online family. We thank you so very much for that. And if you were here and if you're watching online and uh, you're not part of our normal uh, uh, Ridgewood family, hey, go ahead and fill out that guest card. Okay, we'd just love to have a record of your attendance. Many of you have already done that, and we thank you so very much. We just want to say hello to you and, and let you know that we love you uh, and that uh, uh, 
We care about you. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are uh, in Fort City. It doesn't matter if you are in uh, St. Francis County or, or even in the state of Arkansas. Just know that wherever you are, wherever you're watching from and wherever you may be watching from in the future, just know that you are loved and you are cared about by your friends and your family here at Ridgewood Baptist Church in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. Hey, we're going to be diving into Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, if you'd like to turn on over there. Matthew 15, give you a chance just to uh, kind of get ahead. Matthew 15, uh, Matthew 15, uh, we're actually going to be starting at verse 21 here shortly. Matthew 15, verse 21. Uh, if you have not heard our incredible, exciting news, let me go ahead and share this with you now before we dive into God's Word. Next Sunday, next Sunday, Ridgewood comes home. We're coming back to the campus. Um, it's going to be a very special day. Uh, we are going to begin our outdoor services. Um, it'll be a combination of drive-in and outdoor services. Uh, for those of you who would like to stay in your vehicles, we're going to encourage you to do that. Um, we're going to do our best to park our cars about six feet apart. So for anyone who would like to bring lawn chairs and sit out uh, by their cars in the family units, you can do that. And uh, we're going to worship like never before. We're going to sing. We're going to crank up the volume so that the folks in Wynn and Mariana can hear us. That's our goal. Uh, we want to be loud and proud sharing the gospel, but that's going to be at 1030. And so you can either watch on our campus or we're going to con continue to broadcast live. Now, I'm not real sure what that broadcast is going to look like. So I'm, I'm just going to give you you know, the, the, the honest truth. Uh, this will be our first to broadcast outside. And so I don't know. Um, so please bear with us, uh, but uh, we are, our goal is to broadcast outside so you can have uh, a church either online or on campus, and we definitely uh, are looking forward to seeing you here if you possibly can, and uh, if you are not comfortable getting out yet, we so understand. Stay home, uh, find us at 1030 here at uh, Ridgewood Live because we want you to not miss anything that God is doing at Ridgewood. Okay, Matthew 15. We're going to start at verse 21 here in just a little bit. From, uh, from five little pumpkins sitting on a gate, the first one said, Oh my, it's getting late. From that to making sure that you've picked up your kids' AMI packets from school and, and overseeing their schoolwork and making sure it's complete in this brand new virtual world. Such as it is in Mom Life 2020. As I mentioned earlier this past week, I have uh, I've asked moms online to to answer a lot of questions, to get some input, to get some thoughts, and it's been fun, by the way. And one of the questions that I asked was to describe what hashtag Mom Life 2020 looks like. And here's some of their responses. Now, let me just say this. I'm not going to read you all of them because we had a bunch and they were all amazing. But I have to share with you a few because I want you to understand exactly that you're not alone. If you're a mom, you're not alone in mom life 2020. This was one of the responses. Laughter, tears, joy, heartache, love, fun, Fusses, all in all, hoping you have done something right that they can hang on to and thinking that you could have been better at the job of mom. That was shared by our precious Miss D, Miss Deanna Ramsey. Thank you, Miss D, for that. Thank you for that. Here's another one. We are surviving homeschool, 24-7 togetherness, and a working mom. Living a life with no schedule is fun, but wild. And that's from Becca DeVazier. Thank you, Becca, for sharing that. This is, this is powerful. In all seriousness, I am so thankful that my foundation and trust rest in Jesus alone. I would be lying if I said I loved quarantine. I would likewise be lying if I said I wasn't thankful for it. While it has tested my emotions and temper, it has also given me time to slow down and really connect with my 13-year-old daughter. 
I intend to treasure every moment I get because I know that she will soon reach the age where friends are everything. I'm thankful for these quiet moments to really talk about life and help her navigate through so many new experiences. Virus or not, this has been a blessing for us to get to slow down a bit. And that was from our own Lindsay Morris in Washington State. And then this one, this, this last one was great. Looking through old pictures, I realized it had been like a gardener. At first, there was a lot more work and hands-on dirty stuff. And now my girls are older, I can stand back and admire the beauty in what their dad and I worked so hard for. Still have to weed here and there and fertilize, but less is required. So beautiful and quite a humbling job. And that was from our Margaret Howard. Margaret, thank you so very much for that powerful description of what hashtag mom life in 2020 looks like. You see, I love all these. I love all the responses that uh, you have shared with us. And if you'd like to read more, make sure that you go to our page and, and uh, just scroll down and you'll be able to find a lot of these responses. And with each one, you can literally feel the love that's coming through each and every word. And so I say all that to say this, moms, we love you. We love you so very much. I have, uh, I have been so very blessed over the years to to be completely surrounded by amazing ladies in, in my life, and each one championed moms in their in their own right. Uh, there was my my granny, uh, and and that was Grace Whaley. Grace Whaley, that was my dad's mom. Uh, granny was so sweet. She was so soft spoken, and. Uh, Granny always used our first and middle names. There was there was no exception to that. Uh, my dad, it was James William, and for me, it was James William Jr. Uh, no matter who, uh, it was always first and last. There was never an exception to that. And so uh, that was one of the things that just stood out with me for uh, that that precious lady. She was a sharecropper's daughter. She lived a very simple life. She loved her family so very much. And then there was my other grandmother. That was my emo. Now, uh, like I said, I spent a whole lot of time at, at emo's house. Uh, when I was little, when I was a little bitty, I couldn't say uh, grandmother or, or granny or whatever the case may be. And so emo is what came out. And so that's, that's kind of what stuck. And I was the only one of uh, almost 90 first cousins that uh, didn't call her granny. And so, uh, yeah, I was special. I was the third youngest of that whole uh, tribe. And uh, it was just fun to, to get to know her and love on her. She was what I call my, my spunky little grandmother. I mean, she was spunky. Uh, she was as feisty as she was tall. Uh, and she wasn't tall at all, <laughs> but uh, she was very, very spunky. Her hair, uh, one of the things I remember very clearly about my, my emo was not only the fact that she was a, a strong, Bible-believing uh, Christian woman, um, but her hair flowed well, well below her waist. And every night she'd brush it. And then she would braid it in one long braid, and then she would wrap it up on top of her head. And, and I would be willing to say that many of you have had grandmothers or moms that, uh, that actually did that as well. But that was my emo. And, uh, and then in 1984, I said yes to, to the most amazing lady on the planet. And, and uh, you, Ridgewood, are are beginning to get to know her. And, and uh, sadly, this, this crazy quarantine has kind of separated us a little bit. But uh, I can assure you, when you get back, uh, you're going to get to know Miss Denise you know, more than you can ever uh, imagine. And you're going to find out exactly how incredible she really is. Uh, to this day, she continues to put up with me, how I'll never know, and then she, to put up with, with uh, both me and our daughter because we are so identical. It was just not even funny. Uh, and she, she's amazing. She's the most amazing mom to, uh, to this kid of ours that, that I could have ever imagined. And then um, speaking of our kid, uh, you know, just over 30 years ago, this, uh, the, this beauty came into our life uh, to this day. To this day, she still has her daddy, you know, wrapped around her finger. I mean, I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, and, and now she's a mom. 
you know, her own right. And uh, she's the, the mom to the most precious grand boy on the planet. He is amazing. I saw pictures this morning that they were posting for uh, for Happy Mother's Day, and I was very excited about that. But there, there was this one woman. There was this one woman who, uh, she was the youngest of, of eight children. And uh, she, she was the only one from her family to to graduate from high school. Uh, she had been told all of her life that she could never have children, and uh, she was also told that she wouldn't amount to very much. She lived a very quiet life. She uh, she married a business executive. And all the while, while he was doing his job and he was traveling, she worked as a switchboard operator. Uh, Y'all remember those, the switchboards? You know, back long before we got the phone systems we have now. She was a switchboard operator attempting to, to go to business school. And then after being married for five years in 1960, God had other plans for her. She gave birth to what would be her only child, proving, proving all of the doctors wrong. And her simple, quiet life, was not quiet anymore because I haven't shut up since. And that, uh, that is my mama. That is my mother. She stood, uh, she stood all of five feet and one quarter of an inch tall. And she would always remind you about that quarter of an inch. She was five feet, a quarter of an inch. I could stand behind her and she would literally come to right about here. Yeah, I, I could always put my chin on top of her head. And every bit of that of that five feet, one quarter inch was like a five feet, quarter inch block of C4 explosives ready to go off and nobody wanted that. That was that was my mother. She's been gone uh, a long time. Uh, she's been gone 33 years this coming August. And uh, I can promise you that there isn't a day goes by that that I don't think about her in some small, simple way. And for you, those of you whose mom have also uh, passed on, there's there's no doubt that you don't think about them as well. I know you do. Um, it's just one of those things. And I'm, I'm very uh, incredibly blessed because every time that that I look at this red-headed beauty of a daughter of mine, I see my mother. I, I see mom because there's so many similarities between mom and, and Tabitha, it's just, it, it's unbelievable. And not too long ago, I found some old photographs of my mom as a teenage girl. And, and it is mind boggling scary how much Tab looks just like mom. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm very blessed because I get to see that. And uh, Tabitha acts like her, she talks like her, looks like her. So yeah, it's just like my mom all over again. So it's just, uh, it's, it's a funny thing. But I've said all that, I've said all that to say this. God knew exactly what he was doing when he created moms. And, and I'm sure you're going to agree with that. God knew exactly what he was doing when he created moms. Make no mistake, in God's magnificent blueprint, moms and motherhood was never an afterthought. Now, you, you just you process that. You see, he knew. He knew that it would take a, a specifically designed individual that could serve as an incubator of infants, that could nurture a baby in gentle and tender ways, that, that could protect her child or her children at all costs. And then, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I don't think there's a man on the planet that can cure the pain of childbirth. I, don't, I can't. So moms, moms, you are amazing. And we love you so, so very much. But can we just can we just get real this morning? You see, it's not always easy being a mom, is it? You, you just you think about that. See, moms have a very special path to walk. They they see things from a much different perspective. They they hurt in in ways that's only known to other moms. Um, and as we look back through time. See, there have been many scars of, of motherhood, and, and I would dare say that, that many of you ladies today bear similar scars or, or scars in your own right. For example, uh, imagine the pain and the heartache that Eve must have felt when she found out that her son Cain killed his brother Abel. 
Imagine how David's mother felt knowing that, that her three oldest sons were fighting in the Israelite army when they encountered Goliath and the, the Philistine army. And then of all things, she sends her youngest son, here's David, the little boy, to the front lines. And his whole job responsibility was to take food and encouragement. But when he gets there, lo and behold, it is David himself who actually fights and defeats the giant. Imagine the heartbreak of the Jewish mothers who saw their sons kidnapped and, and taken into captivity when the northern and the southern kingdoms were destroyed. I, I, trust me, the mothers of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego never thought they would survive. And, and I can... I can promise you that all the while growing up that Judas Iscariot's mother never imagined in a million years that her son would betray and sell out the son of the living God. And then, and then I wonder, I wonder what it was like for, for that precious little Jewish girl to, to give birth as a unwed mother with the only person being around was her fiance, her betrothed, surrounded by every type of farm animal and transportation pack animal known to man in the filth of a cave designed only for those animals. You see, folks, motherhood can be rough. There's not a mother on any continent when she gave birth, hoped that her child would die of a heroin overdose. No mother wants to see her child get a divorce. No mother wants to see her child have a, a crippling disease. No mom wants her child to become an addict. No mother wants to see her children suffer any consequences for their, their actions. And no godly mother wants to see her child run away from God. However, unfortunately, moms do indeed see these things and more. They see the, the roughest of things. In a perfect world, no mother would ever have to see her child suffer in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But we don't live in a perfect world. But I am here today to tell you something very exciting. And that is that we do have a perfect Savior. And our perfect Savior loves mothers. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to read starting at verse 21. Matthew 15, starting at verse 21. Let's read together. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Now what we have here is we have a, a shift in, in Matthew's gospel from rejection to reception. It's, it's more importantly, it's from Jew to Gentile. And this, this story here in, in uh, Matthew 15 is going to serve as, as the apex of this, of this entire section. It's a crucial, it's a crucial turning point in, in Matthew's gospel. In, in verse 21, we see that Jesus and his disciples went out from there and they departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Okay, let's, let's look at this geographically just real briefly. Tyre and Sidon are on the, the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And Tyre is approximately 25 miles due northwest of Genesaret, And Sidon is about 20 miles north of the coast from, from Tyre. So between verse 21 and verse 22, there's an awful lot of walking that's taking place. 
And, and I can dare say that, that you know, some of the conversation uh, between the disciples were, were going on with Jesus, like, well, what in the world are we doing up in here? Because, you see, not only was that a long way to go on foot, but that was no longer Jewish land. I mean, I mean, they were now in the land of the Gentiles. Their presence in this land was a, was a strong threat to the purity of Israel's religion and, and the morality because the land of Canaan was extremely pagan. It was extremely corrupt. Verse 22 tells us that, that uh, when we see this, and, and a woman of Canaan came from that religion. So this is a Gentile woman. Okay, this is, the, we got to understand this. This is a Gentile woman coming up to Jesus and he and his disciples. Look at her greeting in verse 22. Okay, look, look, look at her greeting. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. And so, the, you know, the, the disciples had to have been wondering, well, what in the world is going on here? Salvation is of the Jews, right? Uh, I mean, you see, the disciples just, they didn't get it. They were not there. They did not get it. But this woman, this, this Gentile woman was drawn to Jesus because she knew exactly who he was. And she also knew who he was to her. Okay? So, and let's look at that greeting again. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. This Canaanite woman acknowledged Jesus as Lord, and not only as Lord, but identified him as the son of David. Okay? She knew exactly who Jesus was, and she also knew that even though Jesus was supposed to be only for the Jew, Jews, that there was a drawing out to her from him. Now, it would be easy to look at this on the face of Scripture and just think that Jesus was simply leaving the area around the Sea of Galilee, that uh, you know he's trying to get away from the scribes, the Pharisees who were who were trying to trick him. But let let's understand something, okay? Let's make no mistake. Jesus knew exactly where he was going. He knew why he was going, and he knew who he was going to see. There is always a method to his madness. We see this all throughout Scripture. You'll hear me say this a thousand different times. He knew where he was going, he knew why he was going, and he knew who he was going to see. Look at the end of verse 22. You see that? End of verse 22, we have a mom. It is a mom that is approaching Jesus. This is a mom who is struggling with her child. This is a mom who is desperate. This is a mom that was reaching out to her last hope. This was not a, a by chance moment. This was not a by chance encounter. But you imagination. This was pre-planned with a purpose. She tells Jesus, my daughter is severely demon possessed. This mother is severely struggling with motherhood because what was happening to her daughter, there was nothing that she could do. Because I would guarantee you she's tried it until now. And here comes Jesus. Now, we don't know, based on Scripture, we don't know how long that the daughter had been possessed. But we do know that it was a hard and a painful journey for this mother. Can you imagine being the mother watching this day in and day out of this demon-possessed child and what it was doing to her baby girl? We also know that this mother was willing to do whatever it took to get help for her child, even if it meant having a pagan Gentile approach the Messiah, the son of the living God. She said, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Church, can't you hear the desperation in her voice? Can you imagine the pain, the struggle that was on her face? Help Jesus. Help. And then verse 43 records Jesus' response. And what was it? Silence. Silence. Not a single word. Why? Why? See, let's always remember this. And it goes back to what I've just said. There was always a purpose to everything that Jesus did. And this encounter was no exception. And when Jesus turned silent, I mean, let's look. His disciples took that opportunity to go to him and encourage him to send her away. She's bothering us, Jesus. She's crying out after us. Get her out of here. Send her away. Oh my goodness, of course she's crying out. This is a mother who needed help. Of course she's going to cry out. 
And if we're honest this morning, there are tons of mothers crying out for help in our communities and in countries and cities all across our country right here. In the Delta, there's moms crying out. And this, this pandemic thing that, that has, has uh, hit us like, like, like nothing we've ever experienced before has compounded the stress level on every single solitary mother. And whether you have little guys and gals in the house and you're trying to keep them safe to do the homework and, and, and you're trying to keep them confined or whether you have grown children and you're worried about them and your grandchildren, it has exponentially impacted Motherhood. You see, motherhood is not always as simple as one ball, two bears, three blocks, four kittens, five apples, and six shoes. Would it be nice if it was? Verse 24, Jesus responded to the disciples, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what was Jesus saying here exactly? See, let's understand something. Jesus' words here are not a rejection of the Gentiles but it was a fulfillment of the prophecy. It is a setting of the priorities and it is a taste of the woman's faith. In Jeremiah 50, verse 6, you might want to write this down. In Jeremiah 50, verse 6, God calls Israel his people and he calls them lost sheep. The Messiah, spoken of throughout the Old Testament, was seen as the one who would gather these lost sheep. We also see this in Ezekiel 34, verses 23 and 24, and we also see it in Micah chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. So when Jesus presented himself as a shepherd to Israel, he was claiming to be the fulfillment of Messianic prophecy. Uh, again, we see this in Mark 6, verse 34, Mark 14, verse 27, and John 10, verses 11 through 16. Jesus' words to the Canaanite woman shows an awareness of Israel's place in God's plan of salvation. God revealed through Moses. I, I love this. This is Deuteronomy 7, 6. Uh, Take, take note of this, Deuteronomy 7, 6. God revealed through Moses that the children of Israel were a holy people to the Lord, chosen, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Oh my God, what a powerful verse. It was through the Jews that God issued his law, preserved his word, and sent his son. That's why Jesus tells the Samaritan woman in John 4, 22 that salvation is of the Jews. See, it was events such as this that would give us a sneak peek into the mission, if you will, to reach the Gentiles, which you know would be to go into all the world. Jesus himself was setting the precedent for this mission. So here in Matthew 15, when the Jewish Messiah says that he was sent to the house of Israel, he is simply connecting his presence with God's purpose in Old Testament history. Christ was born under the law to redeem those who were under the law. That's Galatians 4 verses 4 and 5. Verse 25 back in Matthew 15 should be the standard for all moms. It should be the standard. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Again, this Canaanite woman calls Jesus Lord. Again, she's crying out to Jesus. This mother would not give up at all. Endurance, perseverance, determination. This mother was in a battle. She knew it, and she was doing her best to win it for her daughter. She loved her daughter so much, she didn't want her daughter to suffer one second longer, so she continued to... Crying out to Jesus, moms, moms, and not just moms, dads, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, do not give up. Do not give up. This, this is our, our message this morning. Do not give up. Keep pounding the gates of heaven with your prayers, crying out for your children, for your grandchildren, and for all of those that you care about. Because what may seem like a season of silence, He's hearing you loud and clear. Do not give up. Lord, help me, was her cry. And when Jesus finally responded to her in verse 26, really doesn't look very compassionate, does it? In fact, it kind of looked kind of, kind of rude, to be honest with you, we would think. He answered and said, you know, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. What? What? Children's bread, little dogs. Yeah, that's almost kind of painful when you just look at this on the surface. 
This is a hurting mother watching her daughter suffer who knows what because she was demon possessed. Now, let's, uh, let's, let's think about this. We can pretty much imagine that because we see the wording in verse 25 that she came and worshipped him. Okay, this is you know the second time that she's approached him in this passage. That she is now on her knees crying out to Jesus. She has cried out to him and he's done the silence. You've seen the, the disciples come and will send her away. And now then it says that she came and worshipped him so we can see her down on her knees crying out to Christ. See what Jesus is doing? He's testing that faith. He's seeing that face. She calls him Lord twice. Did she mean it or was it lip service? See, by all rights, that insult should have floored her on the spot. I mean, after all, what is a desperate Canaanite mother to do after such a slap but to you know, kind of slink off into the crowd, take her place in the filthy streets among the dogs where she belongs and go back to the daughter that's still in that demon's grip? But we have to understand exactly what Jesus meant, okay? we gotta, we got to make this very clear. You see, what he was doing was he was reminding her of the historic distinction between the cursed Canaanites and the blessed Israelites. In, in short, Jesus was saying that the Jews are the children and the Gentiles are the dogs. The Jews get fed first. So what Jesus was saying is it's not good to take the Israelites' bread, their food, their their salvation, and throw it to the Gentiles. This, this mother's traditions and her people's history offered her little to no comfort when confronted with a crisis that was bigger than herself. They told her to not expect anything from the Jewish rabbi. They told her that the Jews cannot offer her any help according to their own traditions and laws. Yet, this woman persisted and she pushed through conventional wisdom and she refused to give up. Why? Because she believed that this Jesus was more, was bigger, was greater than her laws and her traditions. And to that I say, amen and amen. We need moms. We need dads. We need people to believe that the Jesus that you and I serve is bigger and greater than any law or tradition in the land. It is all about Jesus. That's where we need to get to, church. This mother's response to what Jesus said was absolutely breathtaking. Let's go to verse 27. It's over here. And she said, yes, Lord. She calls him Lord again. Did you see that? Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She accepts the role. She accepts the role here. Of the dog in relation to Israel. Okay? No problem. But let's remember, she knows perfectly well that the Messiah came to Israel first. She says that she may not be able to sit down at the Messiah's table and eat with the children, with the Jews, but that she should be allowed to pick up some of the crumbs that they drop. See, she's she's essentially saying, I admit that I am no more than a dog, Jesus, but even the little dogs are granted mercy from their master's table. Even the little dogs, the little dogs that are children's pets who are harmless and somewhat helpless are permitted to eat the scraps that fall from their children's plate. So I don't believe that you will do nothing more for me because I know that you're merciful and I have heard how you have helped other Gentiles. I've heard about the mercy that you've shown for your people. I believe in your gospel and I refuse to believe that you will not help me in my distress. In other words, this mother is saying, I am not giving up. That's a mother's love. That is a mother's faith. And we cannot not forget that. She would not allow anything to stand in the way of her faith in the only one who could heal her daughter. And look at Jesus' answer. Look at verse 28. O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. This desperate woman, this desperate mother, 
expressed her faith and pushed through her fear and was rewarded beyond her wildest imaginations. Write this down. Great faith brings great rewards. Great faith brings great rewards. This took courage. This took commitment. It took a mother's compassionate and determined spirit that refused to be deterred. She had not let anyone else persuade her to give up. She wasn't even faced by the disciples' reaction to have Jesus send her away. In the end result, he had answered her cries for help for the healing of her daughter. Even in the darkest moment, when it seemed as if she would not find the answer she desired, she pressed on. You know, I, uh, I'm enjoying a new season in my life. Our daughter and husband, are, they're the proud parents of this, uh, this full of life and energetic two-year-old baby boy. And I'm, I'm quickly finding out that uh, Pabob life is, is great. But something that I'm seeing is, is the growth of our daughter. Uh, you know, I get tickled that she, you know, posts a lot of stuff. She has her own business and she's on social media a lot. And, and she posts a lot about moms and mom stuff. And she uses uh, the hashtag, hashtag mom life. And, uh, and, I, and I can tell you that in just these two short years, I, I, can, I can tell you quick that Hashtag mom life in 2020 is not like it was when I was a child. Uh, and it's not even the same when it was in, when, uh, when Denise was pregnant. I, it, it just wasn't. Being a mom is a full-time job and then some. Moms, you get it. You, you do. Moms, you are heroes. You are warriors. Moms, you are simply amazing. Our faith needs to have that endurance, to have the confidence in Jesus as this mother did in Scripture. When that day was over for this mom in Matthew 15, this mother went back and she held her daughter in her arms free at last from the cruel bondage that she had suffered for who knows how long. She proved, this mother proved, that even though God may test us in what is seemingly strange and unpredictable ways, He will not turn away from His promises to help those who call on Him in their time of need. And He will never turn His back on true faith. So moms, church, online church family, our scripture text here is simple. Never give up. Never give up. Can you say that out loud with me wherever you are? Never give up. I want to close with something that uh, Miss Denise has posted on Facebook. Still rings true today. Said this, you can't scare me, I'm a mom. I've seen it, smelled it, heard it, changed it, and cleaned it. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of truth to that. And then let's add this. And I never gave up. Never, ever give up. You pray with me. Father, I, uh, I'm just in awe of what you continue to do for others. Father, I'm just blown away by each and every day the blessings that you pour out upon us. Father, today I thank you, Father, for your Son. Father, that you loved us enough you sent him to die for us. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for that eternal life that awaits us. And Father, on this special day, I thank you for moms all across the globe. I thank you for their love. I thank you for their determination, their their, their love for their children. Father, I thank you for the women that's been in my life over the years that's loved me, molded me, and shaped me. I thank you for my bride. I thank you for my baby. Both incredible mothers. 
Father, today, if there is anyone here that is struggling, that's listening to this message, Father, may they hear the words, never give up, and to cry out to you. Father, the simplest prayer, and I know this myself, the simplest prayer to you is, dear Lord, help. It doesn't get any simpler than that. And I know personally that you hear those prayers. And then there's, there's prayers that, that I've had, and I can just know without a doubt that there's prayers every mother's had, that they'll just start the prayer, dear Lord, and then there's just no words there's just there's just no words that can come out but father you hear the moaning the groaning in our hearts father thank you for hearing those prayers father if there is anyone here this day that has never given their life to you father may this day be their day that they call out to you and accept you as their lord and savior Father, thank you for loving us and thank you for never giving up on us. Father, watch over us, protect us. Forgive me, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, thank you for hanging out with, uh, with me this morning on Mother's Day. I love you more than you'll realize. Thank you, moms, for all that you do. Thank you for the things that nobody else sees, but God does. Thank you for always being there for your children, for your grandchildren. Thank you for being there for your husbands. Father, I just, uh, I just ask a blessing on each of those that I see here right now. That's my prayer. I pray for each of the families, each of the ladies that I see that's watching right now, each of the moms in our church and the, the moms that I don't see that I know are watching. That is my prayer for you. If you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, won't you do that today? Won't you ask him to come into your life and to save you? Maybe today is that day that you just needed a swift kick in the spiritual britches and to get your life back on track. Take that day as today and make that decision to get serious with God. If you are a guest with us today, would you please fill out that online guest card? We would love to know. Uh, uh, you would like to know who you are, where, that we could just uh, say hello to you in a more personal way. We thank you for that. If you have made a decision, if you have accepted Jesus today, if you've made a decision to, to uh, rededicate, to get back, you know, back on track, then uh, share that with us there in our guest card. There are opportunities to share decisions. Please, please do that. And if you have been blessed by our online services, if you uh, are part of our Ridgewood family, uh, we would encourage you to send your tithes, your financial gifts, to Ridgewood Baptist Church, P.O. Box 785, 4 City, 72336. That's Ridgewood Baptist Church, P.O. Box 785, Four City, Arkansas, 72336. Hey, this week, we've got a lot of great things coming up. A lot of great things. We've got Zoom Sunday School that's going to take place on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And let me just say that anyone is invited to join that that's here. I'm going to put the invitation out uh, here on our page. And if you would love to join our Zoom, we would love to have you. Brother Larry is absolutely tearing it up, and it, it is a blast to be a part of that. And so uh, I would like for this to be my invitation to you. This is going to start at 7 o'clock. And so uh, you want to get in, we'll put the invitation up somewhere around, uh, uh, the invitation somewhere around 10, 15 minutes till 7. Get in there, log in. You've got all the information needed. If you have questions, make sure that you let me know because we want to get you in. Uh, we're also uh, planning right now some additional things uh, some, uh, that's going to be coming uh, this week. Lord willing, we're going to get it up this week. Next Sunday, next Sunday, we're coming home, folks. We're coming back to the campus. And I want you to tell everybody and their brother that the place to be on May the 17th at 1030 is in the parking lot of Ridgewood Baptist Church. 
we want you here. If it's at all possible, if you feel like coming, we want you to be here, bring your families. If you feel comfortable staying in your cars, you stay in the car. If you would like to get out and, and bring lawn chairs and sit by your cars, we'll ask you to sit in the family unit. We are asking to make sure that we focus on social distancing. If you get out, we're not asking anyone to please don't go up to anybody's cars, respect their decisions. Uh, we're asking for no physical contact. We want to maintain our safety here. We love you enough to do this, and that's why we are going in this direction. Uh, we're going to have live worship. Uh, then I'm going to begin a brand new message series. I'm so excited to do that and to share the gospel with you. We're also, if you cannot make it here on our campus, if you live out of town or you're watching online, we're going to be right here online next Sunday morning as well. So on campus or online, Ridgewood comes home. Folks, have a fabulous Mother's Day. If you can at all, please visit your mom, even if it's calling her, texting her, uh, uh, video message, FaceTime, whatever the case may be, make sure that you connect with mom. I love you guys dearly. Uh, Wednesday night, Bible study, 630 right here online as we continue our story in Exodus. And uh, back tomorrow morning, hey, coffee and chat. Well, I'll, I'll be online sometime in the morning. We're just going to kick back, grab a cup of coffee, and we're going to continue reading in the Gospel of John. Folks, I'm out of here. I love you guys so very much. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.